Aloha, Ohana and friends. Met Tales with Tutu again, and I have one for you called Miss Rumpius by Barbara Cooney, C-O-O-N-E-Y. And this book talks about doing something to make the world more beautiful. Could be a smile, could be a story, it could be a song. Let's find out what Miss Rumpius did. But before I start, I'd like to dedicate this to Lanny, my neighbor down the street that grows the most beautiful exotic flowers anyone has ever seen. You can look them up on Facebook yourself and see them. Miss Rumpius. The Lupine Lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks and around her house grow blue and purple rose-colored flowers. The Lupine Lady is little and old now, but she has not always been that way. I know because she is my great aunt, and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived in a city by the sea. From the front step, she could see the waves and the bristling masts of tall ships. She could see the wharf, and many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship and landed on that wharf. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for prows of ships carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores, for that was the time. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures and did carvings too, of sailing ships and places clear across the sea. And when he was very, very busy, Alice helped him to put those on the shelves. In the evening, Alice would sit on her grandfather's knee and listen to his wonderful stories of faraway places. And when he'd finished, Alice would say, well, when I grow up, I'm going to go to faraway places too, Grandpa. And when I grow old, grow old, I will live beside the sea just like you. Well, little Alice, that's all very well. But there's a third thing you must do. Well, what is that? You must do something to make the world more beautiful. Hmm. All right. But what that could be, she didn't know. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face, ate her porridge for breakfast, went to school, came home, did her homework, and day after day and week after week and year after year, pretty soon she grew up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home. She went to live in another city far from the sea in the salt air. And then she worked in the library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones that they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places, and people now called her Miss Rumpheus. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park, and when she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, warm moist air wrapped itself around her, and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, she thought, but not quite. So, Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long sandy beaches picking up beautiful seashells. And then one day she met Bapa Raja, the king of the fishing village. You must be tired. Why don't you come into the house and rest? So Miss Rumpheus went into the house and met his wife. And Bapa Raja himself fetched a green coconut, cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumpheus could drink the cool coconut water inside. But before she left, the Baharaja gave her a beautiful mother-of-pearl shell on which he had painted the bird of paradise and the words, You will always remain in my heart. Miss Rufia smiled. You'll remain in mine too. And then my great Miss Alice Rumpheus climbed tall mountains where the snow me never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing with kangaroos and jumping, and everywhere she made friends that she would never, ever forget. Finally, she came to the land of the lotus eaters, and there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places, so maybe it's time for me to go find my place by the sea. And so it was, and so she did. Well, from the perch of her new house by the sea, Miss Rumpheus could watch the sun come up. She could watch it cross the heavens, sparkle on the water, and then she saw it set in its glory every evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony, stony ground. They were lupin, and they grew beautifully. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. 
but there's still one thing I must do. I must do one thing to make the world more beautiful. But what could it be? The world is already a pretty nice place. Just looking at the ocean is beautiful. Well, the next spring, Miss Rumpius was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose and colored. Lupins. Oh, I have always loved lupins the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could still have more flowers next year, and the world would even be more beautiful next year. But she wasn't able to. It was a hard winter for her. She was not feeling too well, and she had to rest the entire winter until spring came. In spring, Miss Rumphia was feeling much better. Now she could walk again, and one afternoon she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. <gasps> I don't believe my eyes, for there on the top of the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupins. It was the wind, the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here to make it beautiful. And even the birds must have felt. And then Miss Rufius got a wonderful, splendid idea. She hurried home. She got her seed catalogs out and sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupin seed. All that summer, Miss Rumphius would fill her pockets full of seeds. She'd wander up and down the roads, over the fields, the headlands, sowing lupins wherever she went. She scattered seeds along the highway, down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and even in the back of the church. She even tossed them into the hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her at all anymore, but now some people called her the crazy old lady. Next spring, there were lupins everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and even in the back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew even more beautiful purple and blue and pink flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third thing after all, the most difficult thing. She had done one thing to make the world more beautiful. My great aunt Alice Miss Rumpheus is very old now. Her hair is very, very white, and every year there are more and more lupins, and now they call her the lupin lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted fields and fields and lanes of lupins. When she invites us in, they come kind of slowly and tentatively. They think she's the oldest woman in the world. They're afraid she might break. She often, though, tells us of faraway places and many stories of where she was been. When I grow up, you know what, Aunt Alice? What, dear? I want to go to far away places just like you. And then I want to come home and live by the sea just like you. Well, that's all very well, little Alice. There's a third thing you must do. Well, what is that? You must do something to make the world more beautiful. Miss Rumpheus by Barbara Cooney. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Remember, make the world more beautiful by doing one thing, reading a story, singing a song, sharing a smile, adding sign to music, deepens the meaning and the feeling of music. Try it. Be sure to talk story on the way home today and share a song with someone. Ahui ho, aloha.